Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Upper Room Fellowship of Jesus Christ Friday Bible Study. I'm Pastor Tyrone. I have Pastor Mike here with me tonight. And we will start a new series of the Proverbs. So before we start, let us just give this over to the Lord. So let us pray. So Heavenly Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for this time to be in your word. And thank you for this study. And we just pray that you'll be in the midst of us. You know, where two or three are gathered. You're in the midst of us, and we just, exactly where we want you to be in the midst of us tonight as we study this song, as, as we study this Proverbs, and uh, give us revelation, give us wisdom, give us understanding as we go through this song, and um, we just surrender it all to you in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. 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 This is song, Proverbs 1, part 1. Okay, so Proverbs one verse one says the proverbs of solomon the son of david king of israel amen we know that david wrote most of the psalms and um because he was the wisest of them all during that time and uh, he was the son of david praise the lord and solomon wrote most of the proverbs yeah, Solomon wrote most of the Bible. Yes. Yeah. And Proverbs are an interesting book. It, it tells us how to uh, understand life and how to get through life, how to get wisdom and how to uh, deal with the trials and tribulations that we go through in our daily <coughs> lives and uh, how we can live in the world and uh, how to handle things that happen to us as we go through this walk in the world with the Lord. It's um, very good. Amen. Any comments? In First Kings 4, verse 32, he spoke 3,000 proverbs and his songs were 1,005. Amen. Amen. Wow. Solomon had a lot of proverbs. Yeah. Well, he had a lot of wisdom, that's for sure. And he understood. Solomon went through a lot. And he shares it with us all. Amen. Any other comments? Verse two, to know wisdom and instructions, to perceive the words of understanding. Amen. This is what the Proverbs are all about. Wisdom, instruction, and understanding. And we'll see uh, wisdom throughout the whole proverb series it always stresses wisdom the key word amen and comments oh yes um yes not when when solomon became king and he, he asked God that he would have the wisdom to lead these people. And God gave him wisdom beyond anyone else in the world. And so, and we see that reflected in this, in, in the Proverbs. And that's, that's, that, that's one of the amazing things about Solomon and the Proverbs and, and the reason why is because because God gave it to him. Amen. Yeah, he asked and God gave it to him. That's yes. for sure. And we too can ask. Amen. We can. Yes, we can. <laughs> And we should. 
<laughs> and we should, and we will be blessed. Amen. Any other comments? In Proverbs 9, verse 10, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Amen. Amen. You know, our journey is about knowing who the Lord is and understanding, you know, because he clearly tells us his ways are not our ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts. So we want to understand the Lord, you know, and we talk about this fear, this fear is not just being scared. It's about the respect that we should have for the Lord. And that is the beginning of wisdom. If we respect the Lord for who he is and what he does and the power that he has, then we will, well, our walk will be a lot easier and our understanding of him will be great. I just say that. Amen. 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 Any other comments? Oh, yes. In that second line, knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Now, we know that knowledge of knowledge implies intimacy uh and and uh having intimacy with god is like almost like being one with him and 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 uh so knowledge from that respect of knowing knowing the depths of the lord the holy one you now and that that would that is understanding that yes that that gives us understanding to have that knowledge to have that intimacy with god and he he does the rest he's there and so he gives us he gives us the understanding amen amen man praise the lord this is steve uh, yeah, a knowledge of the Holy One is understanding, knowledge of the Lord. Uh, of course, you, we talk about it all the time. Blessed are you, Father, for you've known him who is from the beginning. That intimate knowledge Pastor Rufus is talking about. Right now, Toby Beck has a, a song on the radio called Promised Land. And in this song, he's talking about where's my promised land? Where's the streets of gold and all that kind of stuff? And, but in the song, he gets the revelation that the promised land is Jesus. Jesus is the promised land. Amen. And what it means is coming to know him, the one who was from the beginning, is where we find rest. Because once we really know him, we don't need to protect ourselves. We don't need to fight our battles. We don't need to spend for ourselves. We don't have to do anything. We can enter that rest, trusting him fully because we know him that well that we can just be be at total rest. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise and the Lord. Amen. 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 Any other comments? Verse three, to receive the instructions of wisdom, justice, judgment, and an equity. Amen. And comments? Yes, and, and uh, that all comes from the understanding and the knowledge of the Holy One. Amen. Uh, and, 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 and so yeah. he gives us those instructions wisdom, justice, judgment, and equity. Praise the Lord. Any other comments?
In 1 Kings 3, verse 28. Mm. And all Israel heard of the judgment which the king had rendered, and they feared the king, for they saw that the wisdom of God was in him to administer justice. Amen. 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 Sounds like Solomon knows what he's talking about. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yes. Amen. <laughs> yes, he does. Any other comments? <laughs> yes. Uh, it, now, it's amazing that it says, and they feared the king because he had the wisdom of God. They saw that the wisdom of God was in him to administer justice, and they know that well for one thing they couldn't get away with anything and so that was another reason and i believe that fear was also a fear of like reverence having reverence because that's what the fear of the god is to have to to just have you know this great respect for for someone and for especially for god and so and I believe that's what Israel had for Solomon as well, uh, because of his his judgment, his his wisdom, and all that he 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 gave he offered them. And yes, Amen. Amen. Thank you. Yeah, it, the word spread that how much wisdom and the wisdom of God that was among him. The word got around. Praise the Lord. Any other comments? Verse four, to give prudence to the simple, to the young man knowledge and discretion. Amen. Any comments? Well, you know, it says um, the words to give prudence to the simple. If we think about the word simple, um, you know, in, in we we've, we've learned that God uses the foolish things of the world, that the world looks at those things that are foolish, but God can use that to his benefit. Um, and, and so even in our own simple minds, uh, because they're simple, God can fill us with his prudence because we're not all about gaining our own importance. We know that we're simple. We know that we are, you know, not, um, we know in and of ourselves, we are not wise. We are not, we are not knowledgeable, but it's only because of acknowledging our simplicity that God can put in us his prudence and put in us his knowledge. Amen. 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 And so to the young man, you would expect that uh, the young man to be, to be simple. He gives prudence to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. So that knowledge and discretion, discretion is tantamount to prudence. And the young man is 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 likely to be in simple, someone who is simple. No. Amen. Amen. And all the comments. And then even Paul said in First Corinthians two verse two, for I determined not to know anything among you except. Jesus Christ 
and him crucified. And just the simplicity of that, you know, a lot of people can um, overthink or debate or different philosophies, but just the fact that Jesus has died for all of us. Amen. The simplicity of that and not overthinking or, you know, just resting on the fact that it's, it is finished and he already has the victory. Amen. Praise the Lord. Any other comments? Psalm 116, verse 6. The Lord preserves the simple. I was brought low and he saved me. Amen. Amen. Any comments? Verse 5, a wise man will hear an increased learning, and a man of understanding will obtain wise counsel. Amen. But we need to know that when it talks about a wise man and a man of understanding, this has to be a man who's been given wisdom by God. Because there's wisdom of the world and there's the wisdom of God. And yes. so we need to understand that it's the wisdom of God that can really only be, uh, can only make it possible for a man or a woman to be wise. And it's only the understanding of God that can only make that possible. Um, we can get confused by the wisdom of the world, the understanding of the world, the knowledge of the world, and all that crap that's put out there daily. But um, this is talking about a man who has submitted to the Lord and surrendered to the Lord and asked God to give him wisdom, the wisdom of God. Amen. Amen. Yeah, we do know that there's two kinds of wisdom. There's the wisdom of the world and there's the wisdom of God. And you know, and we do have to be able to discern the difference between the two. You know, yes. the world is not looking for the wisdom of God. And, and that's the sad thing. You know, they they would eyes would be so open if they would just, you know, listen to the wise man and increase the knowledge, you know, open the book and and go to church, you know, and um, not rely on, you know, the internet and all those mm -hmm. apps that's on there that's you know leading them astray. Yeah. You know, they, there's no wisdom in any of those things. And, and the ones that's writing that is loving it because they, you know, talk about I got, you know, thousands of followers listening to my every word. And, you know, and their word is crap. Like you said, Sister Joanna, they, yeah. it's meaningless. It won't help them. It's leading them down a path that they should not want to go. But, but we pray for them. And that's, that's what we have to do. Yeah, we have to. We have There's to. There's so much out there. I mean, we know that everything of God, the, the Satan will have a counterfeit. Yes. And he will try to make that counterfeit look so much like the real thing. But having that discernment, only God can give us that discernment to decipher between the counterfeit and the real things of God. And, you know, um, the devil, he, um, he's out to really deceive. And so in order to deceive, he wants to make it look as close as possible 
to maybe the, the things of God, mm -hmm. but there's enough in there that's error that only, only God can give us that discernment. I mean, only God can do that. It, it's so, <coughs> it, I, I look around and I mean, I even see things on the internet. I, I see things that, 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 that you know, Christian websites and stuff. And you, you got to be careful of everything you take in. You got to ask the Lord to, 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 to stand guard at the, at the opening of your mind and your heart so that the things that we let in are truly of God. You know, oftentimes I, I, I pray a prayer, oh Lord, help me, help me to know your truth amen because uh, the adversaries will put out a truth that can kind of look like truth you know <laughs> but yes. it's not it's not and i mean as we roll down into um a time of you know towards the end of time really it, 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 the adversary is really gonna step up his game to try to fool and deceive people. And it's already happening. Many yes. people are being deceived and, and don't understand. They really don't. But, you know, as long as they have breath, there's always hope. Mm -hmm. Amen. Any comments? Can, can you hear me okay, Uncle Tyron? Yeah, we hear you now. Yeah, and I, I know um, we're in the Proverbs, and I, I, I remember in Proverbs 3, 5, it talked about that trust in the Lord and lean not on your un, own understanding. So Amen. it's kind of like the same as that one, because, you know, when... You know, there's always, you know, the different, like, God's ways is different than man's way. You know, we know that God, his way is always perfect. The Lord's word is flawless. And man's way, there is a way that seems right to a man, but it's end in the way sometimes to death. And then mm -hmm. he knows that, you know, God's heart is is righteous in all his ways and faithful in all he does and as we know you know man's heart sometimes is deceitful i mean above all things and you know god's way do not change but you know man's heart it's always you know it's always changed so that's why that that proverbs is really like you know it's really wise to to seek counsel and just not not go on our own like you know sometimes our flesh you know sometimes it, it really you cannot really trust sometimes your your flesh and when sometimes you know when we make decision out of our flesh sometimes it's always not the best one to to do you know sometimes we we end up in a worse place that we thought that we escaped so yeah it's yeah amen amen thank amen. you so Ooh, you're absolutely right oh, that's the learning that we have to understand what god's way is and what man way says and we can't ever go wrong learning God's ways, that's for sure. And yeah, understanding and his way. Yeah, and sometimes I will, you know, in my thoughts, like, okay, I mean, we pray that God will close the door that he want to close and open the one he want to open. But sometimes I think, you know, I felt like sometimes I do, like, test him, like, no, I know he will close it. So I mean, but there are times that I guess he will let you go there if you're like, like an annoying person. You know, you're like, you're like me. I was like, uh, maybe I go change a job, but you know, he never opened a door. But I was like thinking, 
how about he open the door for that just for me to learn how it looks like that that you know i'm in a better place and then i went to a worse place you know sometimes like that so yes yeah just praise god for his you know his his mercy and i know he 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 knows my thoughts so yeah you know. amen and it's all he's already working on the new place you just don't know it you know and stuff and you know it's hard to wait sometimes amen that's that's the thing it's like you know sometimes it's like how long it will take us to be in the problem i mean that's the same thing with the israelite you know yeah. they, i mean they don't know that it will take many many years they just thought that as soon as maybe you cross then there you go but you know god's way is not our way so that's that's the thing you know and he we always know that his way we will learn something from his way and it's always for our benefit that's the one i kind of um, noticed then when i look back i said you know there are times that you doubt but you know yes. but even you doubt he still forgive he still love at the end he still bless just just you know just grateful for that fact that you know there are times that work this place is kind of unbearable but looking when you have that you know you endure you persevere you hold on to his promise then you see the rewards and i was just amazed because i was i was um <clears throat> got you know an email from you know our employee association of the whole 23 campus and i mean we don't usually pay attention with those but today you know i was reading and it says there that oh we got a possibility of receiving a seven percent you know seven and eight is the number and i was like oh you know it's it's amazing but that seven is completion and you got an eight of new beginning and they said that they will um that negotiation is almost getting to a close deal that we might already get an increase starting july 1 but of course the money will not be dropped until october which is retroactive and they even um had in the negotiation that they give all the employee 3500 one time bonus something and i was like oh wow that's you know that's you know that's only god can give us that and only god can approve that so i i just you know just praise god for you know all this you know little blessing and provision you know? amen amen Another comment. A man, uh, the part where it says, a man of understanding will attain wise counsel. And in Proverbs eleven fourteen, it says, where there is no counsel, the people fall, but in the multitude of counselors, there is safety and especially counselor, counselors who are seeking the Lord. Amen. Um, and the question was brought up earlier. Many people are seeking the truth. And what is truth? Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. And ultimately, people who are truly seeking God will find that truth. In Matthew 7, it says, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be given to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks it will be opened. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. And the key there is faith. Yes. We ask in faith. We seek in faith. And we know that God will, will respond to our faith. Um, 
like you know the woman with the blood issue and what happened in that crowd of people when everyone was pressing upon him he he felt her touch him but there were many people touching him but what he felt was her faith he the 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 faith in her was so strong that it, it caused him to respond to her um it 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 it, it, it it brought, it, it just was so powerful. So God responds to our faith when we ask. So we don't want to ask, like it says in James, amiss. We mm -hmm. don't want to be like the sea, you know, going back and forth. We want to ask in faith. And boy, yes. when we ask in faith, he responds virtue his virtue uh, is activated <laughs> I, don't know how, I don't know i don't know how to explain it but i i have seen that in my life i have felt that i have felt his response to my faith mm. and uh it's powerful when it happens mm. you know it's so powerful and i think of that woman in that crowd of people so many people pressing upon him yet he discerned this particular individual who had this strong faith in him oh mm -hmm. it's it's a beautiful thing amen yes he felt the power come out of him amen he, he yes he, he felt it himself yes praise the lord Yes, that's found in James 1, verse 6. But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts like a wave of the sea, mm. driven and tossed by the wind. Amen. Amen. Pastor Nike, amen. We know that God is the author and finisher of our faith. It's, Praise the Lord. It's a gift from God. Yes, it is. And we lack the faith. We just have to ask him, Lord, increase our okay. faith, help our unbelief. That's right. In Romans 10, verse 17. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. 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 There it is. Amen. Praise the Lord. Any comments? Verse six, to understand a proverb and an enigma, the word of the wise and their riddles. Amen. Comments. In Mark 4, I'll oh, go ahead. Go ahead. So that can only be done with his spirit. Amen. To understand the riddles and all that. Remember, he said to the disciples, to you it has been given. It can only be understood with his spirit amen. amen praise the lord and speaking of in mark 4 11 <laughs> and he said to them to you it has been given to know the mystery of the kingdom of god but to those who are outside all things come in parables amen, amen. okay i give up you guys are too good <laughs> <laughs> no, don't do that you were <laughs> Prophesying and the word confirmed. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's proof we all share the same spirit. 
Amen. Yes, we are. Praise the Lord. Any comments? Again, um, Matthew 11, verse 25, it says, At the time, Jesus answered and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. You have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and have revealed them to babes. Um, yeah, just praise the Lord. Amen. You know, the revelation that God gives us. Amen. From him. Mm -hmm. Verse 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and understand. And instruction. Um, I mean instruction, sorry. <laughs> The fools despise wisdom and instructions. Um, there, there are so many people in the world that, you know, who maybe have all these degrees and everything. and But what they're doing is they're following their own ways, their own devices. Um, they're not... Um, they're not really gaining true wisdom because they, uh, a lot of what the world has is, is really without God. It, it doesn't include God in the mix. If you include God in the mix, you can get a, 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 a true regard, um, a, a, a true discernment, a true wisdom. But so often the world, it just doesn't have that. It doesn't seem to want to add that to the mix. If only God could be added to the mix of everything. If only God, if only they would acknowledge God, you know, we would have a clearer vision of how to deal with climate control, the, the whole crisis that we're facing, the planet Earth is facing. But it's like, you know, it, it, it doesn't include God. And, uh, you know, there's so many things going on around us that are, uh, you know, we're in a state of crisis in so many ways. And um, if we would just have the fear of the Lord and allow him to fill us with his knowledge and his strength, and yes, he's given all of us intellect. These are gifts from God, the ability to learn, the ability to read, the ability to understand his creation. Um, but <laughs> if we don't acknowledge God, it, it, it just is empty. Amen. You know, it's leaning on their on our own understanding, and that never works. It's like Sister Lou was saying, we can't lean on our own understanding. It's sad because there's a lot of people that I know, um, they were on fire for the board before they went to college, they had this deep relationship with the Lord and, and you know, God can send someone to college if, if that's God's plan. But, you know, a lot of them, when they entered into college, they just went the complete opposite yes. way. Um, they went to the far end and it's as if they didn't have a relationship with the Lord and the things that they're learning in school is just the world and and it draws them away um but maybe that's why god has some of us in 
college settings. <laughs> <laughs> um, who knows what God has planned? Um, you know, I, I just see a lot of them. They they need the light. They need the truth, and especially in a setting where you know they they don't have that. Yeah. So whatever God has planned, His will be done. You know, they 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 don't have His presence there, and that's what. I mean, there are a lot of schools, religions, and all of those schools, but his presence is not there. You can learn a lot of stuff, but without his presence, it's just for nothing, you know. And and that's not bringing people to him, you know. Without his presence, we need his presence in order for him to draw that man, you know. I was watching one of the news programs, and um, it said that um, uh, the country is, there's a big, big opening for kids going to Christian schools now, because they don't want their kids learning all these things of the world, you know, in elementary school, in junior high school, in high school, there. You know, they're, they're teaching these kids about all these things of the world and, and how, um, you know, there's no value. These kids shouldn't be learning the kind of things that, that they want to teach them, you know. And so there, um, there's a big, big flux of, of kids going to Christian school, which I think is a good thing, you know. They, they learn at least you know, about God and his presence and um, and kind of keeps them away from all that other stuff that public schools and private schools want to teach kids now because, you know, they're just going with the flow of the world. Whatever's happening in the world, they want to inject it in the school now. And, you know, kids are not being kids and they're not, you know, they're learning stuff way over their head, way over what they're ready for. And uh, I'm glad parents are finally realizing that because um, we do need God back in the school. We need God back in our home, you know. We just, we need God and we need his wisdom and his instruction for sure. And if this teaches them to fear the Lord, I'm all for it. Because uh, this will draw them in. Pastor Nike was saying about you know, the schools. Amen. 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 I know that um, years ago, my husband, Ray, and I, we had to make a decision. And um, it kept us poor. <laughs> we had to pay tuition to send our kids to a, a Christian school, a Christ-centered education. Um, and it's important. Uh, it's very important. Um, and even though you do that, there's gonna come a time when a child will have to make the decision for him or herself. Mm -hmm to follow God, to have a relationship with the Lord. No education, no um, my sharing, my relationship with the Lord, with my children can cause them to have a relationship. They mm -hmm. have to find it on their own. It can't be disciplined into them. It has to be a heart, uh, a heart change. A heart, uh, the circumcision of the heart, <laughs> as we talk about all the time. And I know that, I mean, much sacrifice was made to pay tuition, to send our kids to a Christian school. And I think it was good. I think they got a good education. I think they got, a, 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 um, um, I think they got a, a, a um, Oh, what is the word I'm trying to think of? I think they got a, a good view, a, a Christ-centered view of the world. However, 
just because you do that doesn't mean it's going to take. It has to be a change in the heart. There has to be a growth where a child grows to a, 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 a person who accepts the Lord. Um, and just like, and you know, I know there's a lot of stuff going on in our country right now. Um, you know, like e even take the issue of abortion. Uh, this, it, it, you know, you can legislate certain things, but legislation will not change the heart of a person. The heart of a person needs to be changed in order to accept the, what is right and what is wrong. It, it has to be uh, an individual journey. And I, you know, I don't want to offend anybody here by, by this, but it's so important just because you put your kids in a Christian school, just because you outlaw abortion doesn't mean the heart of anyone is changed. Prayer is needed for every individual, for our children, for our country, for, for women all over this world. It has to be something in their heart that causes them to say no. I will not do this. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm kind of probably getting out there on this, but I, when you brought up Christian education, knowing what I went through, my kids from the beginning, they were in a Christian school, Christian preschool, Christian kindergarten, first, second, third, all the way up through 12th grade. And still, it's not a sure thing because the heart of the individual must be changed and it can only be changed by God, not an educational system. It has to be something that happens between that individual and God because that's intimate. That's intimate between a young person, a middle-aged person, whoever the person is, and God. It is God that does that. Amen. 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 Sorry if I offended anyone. You're oh, like, no, you're okay. <laughs> Not at all. Um, Maybe mama. <laughs> <laughs> My yeah. grandmother speaking of. He's calling me Big Mama. Yeah. Oh my goodness! No, we, I call we call my grandmother Big Mama, and, and she she, uh, she she preached Jesus to us. She instructed us in in, in the Word uh, from when I was just six, seven years old. Yeah. And so, thank you, Joanna. <laughs> Yeah, um, I just want to um, say, um, Pastor P, regarding that one, because, you know, I felt like, I mean, God for sure never <laughs> expected us to leave our mind at the door when we believe on him. Because, you know, in Luke 10, 27, it says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind. So that's mind means in action that we do in the thing that we think we will ask question in this thought that I had, does it, does it answer that I love the Lord? You know, it's like that. It's like if you do that abortion, does it like, you know, does it reflect the love of God? Something like that. So it's like when we do action, does it reflect that I love God? You know, so it's kind of like that. So it, it's just if, if kind of like this word in there. 
so we will know how to treat the body mm -hmm. the, the the light inside our body you know all those things so it just it's just with one of just one of the sentence it's it i guess it, it will solve the issue in this world because you know it's the love love the lord your god and it says there so i think like everything in ourself it's like important to the lord he wants you know the heart soul our strength you know like our physical Amen. it's it's just not like oh lord you could have my strength you know but still it's yeah it's it's just amazing when i was reading this and just listening with sister joanna that you know there are a lot of problem in the world but i think in this verses in luke i think that will answer you know amen the, the things that going on in in the world amen well you know in a way it's just like you know we talk about the the legalism you know the the Israelites said, oh, yes, we can keep this law. We can do this. We can do this. But they couldn't because their hearts weren't changed. Um, but when you get to the issues of the heart, then change can truly occur. And, um, uh, you know, J Jesus said, okay, you know, murdering somebody is not just murdering them if you hate someone you commit murder if you know i mean he he showed the true condition of of our hearts you know it, it it's not you know yeah you can go and have an affair with a somebody that's not your wife or husband but if you look upon somebody with that kind of lust, you have sinned. You know, we need to really get that. And only God can make that change in our hearts. Only God can cause that to happen to us. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, my heart uh, goes out to you know, the students and the, in the public school setting where they don't have believers around them That's or right. Christian communities, um, you know, those who have already accepted God in their hearts. And so, you know, in that regard, it's like, you know, my heart goes out to them. You know, they believe in the Lord and yet um, they're you know, at college, away from home, and and they don't have this, like what we have, a, a, a spiritual family, and, and they, they don't have that in, in a school setting. So, yeah, in God's timing, he will do something. Amen. It's yeah. like you said, you know, you know, Bible says, show, bring up a child the way it should go. But we know that when the child is brought up in the way it should go, when it goes on into the world, it's a whole different ball game. You know, there are so many influences and 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 that's what, you know, traps kids into doing all kinds of things. You know, okay, but you know, we talked about staying planted and rooted, you know, and that's what it takes. You know, to keep our hearts right. And sometimes, you know. People lose that along the way. They do. And, you know, that's where wisdom, knowledge, and instruction comes in. For sure. Amen. Amen. Yes. Pastor, uh, uh, excuse me for this, but I, does that passage say that Bring up a child in the way it should go, and when he's old, he won't depart. Depart from it. That's right. Amen. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah I, I does just... Does that mean that he could leave it and come back to it? Oh, absolutely. Yes. I pray. 
<laughs> yeah, you know, it's amazing. Yes. Um, there's a true story of a human trafficking survivor, and she grew up as a little girl hearing the song "Jesus Loves Me." You know, she grew up in Sunday school, and but as she grew older, her life was just a mess, and she fell into this human trafficking. And right when the man was beating her and, and put her in the trunk of his car about to kill her. She was singing all she can remember from her walk with God was Jesus loves me. And she was singing that. And because she was seeking the Lord and seeing Jesus, Jesus loves me, the man just stopped and just left her alone. Didn't hurt her, didn't plan on doing what he was planning to do. And so I truly believe that seeds are planted in these children. And yet, you know, they can grow up and and stray away for a little bit, but ultimately they're gods and they will come back That's to That's right. Them. Amen. Amen. And we keep praying for them. Absolutely. Amen. And allowing them to go astray is God's way of teaching us as well. Amen. For those who need it, right? And the story of the prodigal son is a lesson so that he would learn, we get the revelation of where he needed to be uh, through some suffering. And so, and the other thing about that is that we think in human terms, physical aspects of, of talking and speaking and so forth, but... Um, but like, like when we ministered to the seniors before COVID, when we started, they were all asleep, but they were getting the word and their spirit was being fed. And so when we talk about train up a child the way they should go, the word is getting in them and that word is going to work in their spirit, uh, whether, oh no, uh, whether, uh, whether they consciously know it or not. So God is the parent that's training up every child in the way they should go. Praise the Lord. Yeah, I remember when they used to mock us and curse us and, and you know, if they had stones, they would have thrown them, you know. But, uh, I thought they actually threw food. <laughs> they did throw food. They threw food. Yeah. <laughs> I think I was there in the, a little bit in the beginning. Yeah. yeah, I mean, but then as time went on, they put down their weapons, you know, <laughs> and uh, the words started to sink through, and, and then they were praising the Lord. Amen. So, yes, this is it's definitely possible. We believe that. Amen. Amen. In Job 28, verse 28, and to man, he said, behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. Amen. Amen. Lord. Amen. Verse 8, my son, hear the instructions of your father. And do not forsake the law of your mother. Amen. Amen. Proverbs 4.1. Hear my children the instruction of a father and give attention to no understanding. Amen. Amen. And God is our ultimate father. That's right. He is our father in heaven. And just like what, what was said before when we tell the little children not to touch the socket and they still do <laughs> you know we're telling them because we're looking out for them you know looking after them and just like our heavenly father he knows what's best for us hey. Any comments first time for well, they will be a gracious ornament on your head and chains about your neck. Amen. Proverbs 3, 3. 
Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Amen. Amen. This is wisdom. The comments. All right, it's already 8.30. Uh, got nine more verses in this part one. So I guess we can just continue that next week. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Everybody okay if we stop right here? Yeah, that's good. Thank you. <laughs> that was beautiful. Um, Thank you so much for this study and all the work you put into it. And just, um, it's so wonderful that the word of God is active and we can all talk about it and yeah. share our hearts about it. Yes. Amen. Amen. Type of forum where we can do that. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. No. We don't want to rush through this. We want to take our time and no. and talk about it and get the revelation and and get some wisdom and understanding. Okay. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 Bind it around our necks. Bind it around our necks, yes, yes. sir. <laughs> and write it on the tablets of our hearts. Praise the Lord. That's what God does. He writes it on the tablets of our hearts. So it's there forever. Yes, it is. Amen. 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 Okay. So I guess this is a good place to stop for now. We will continue this next week. Thank you all for all your comments and all and everything, just being on the study. And I can't wait till next week and we continue this. So Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Knight as well. Thank you, Sister Thank you, God bless. Comments. God bless. Everyone. Pastor Steve. Thank you all. Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you, you Lauren. Thank you, Lord. God bless. God bless. God bless. God bless.